now, The Alan Key Show. Welcome back to America's Wake Up Call. I'm Alan Keyes. You're listening to the special Christmas edition of The Alan Key Show. And it, it is always uh, a little bit of a challenge for me uh, to introduce our next guest because it, it's one of those instances when I find it difficult to put into words the degree of respect and uh, admiration that I have for somebody who, who has really, in their person and life, set a standard for me that, that I keep in mind and, and uh, try to live up to. You know, there's certain people in life, you carry them around in your head and you consult a little bit. You're thinking to yourself, at times you make decisions, what would so-and-so say about that? And, and in terms of much that I do in my public life and in dealing with a lot of the issues of our time and in dealing with other challenges of life, uh, the man I'm with today is like that for me. He is somebody I have watched over the years who has acted with the utmost integrity, even in the, in the hardest of, of circumstances, who has been willing to make the kind of sacrifices for the sake of that integrity that I think at the end of the day can only come from a really, really deep and honest and sincere faith that God is there, and at the end of the day, it is only his will and judgment that matters. Uh, and, and that's a rare and beautiful thing that has been an inspiration for me in life. And, and that's about the highest praise I could give to anybody. Uh, and I give it to you, Paul Weirich, and I'm glad that you're able to join us on this Christmas special this year. Appreciate it very much. Well, I'm very pleased to be here, but uh, may I say that you have served similarly as an inspiration to me. So... Uh, we better not let each other down. <laughs> That's, <all I> can <laughs> That's say exactly right. <laughs> You'd be in serious trouble. You know, wh we, we are in the midst of, of one of the favorite times of the year for me. Uh, and, and it's been especially true this year because obviously we've been in the midst of all kinds of goings on in the country. And yet, you come upon the Christmas season, and there it is as it always is. It always is for me a time when one remembers the peace and the joy and the promise and the hope that has a cosmic significance that nothing can take away from. And, and, and it is, as a result, a beautiful time of year, made more beautiful for me in recent years because I have a family and children, and, and there's, I think, a special kind of magic and charm to the Christmas season as you pass on the traditions of, of faith that are represented by this season. And, and that's what I want to talk about a little bit today uh, in, in terms of what this, this season means to you in particular as we approach it uh, again this year. What are the special thoughts and memories you have about the Christmas season? Well, I have so many, uh, but uh, really at the end of the day, it is contained in John's Gospel when he said, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son mm. so that those who believe in him shall not perish. God's love for us was so great that God became man so that we would have the chance to become like God. Mm. And uh, this particular feast is, is one which uh, uh, highlights in a way both the majesty and the humility of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that that he didn't come down as he could have uh, uh, on a cloud and directed mm -hmm. that all things be done, or that he you know could have come in in some other uh, form of spirit or, or what have you. Instead, he took upon himself our flesh, so that that which he touched he could redeem, and that is the focus which. I'm afraid in a lot of the hoopla that we have in the Christmas season is in fact lost. And I think uh, in the second half of the 20th century, it is particularly lost. I remember, I'm old enough to remember a time when in fact, there was a much greater focus on the real meaning of Christmas and not the fact that we give gifts and, and everything else. We give gifts precisely because the greatest gift that God could give was given to us. Yeah. And so that's the reason we give gifts, but people, you know, sort of forget the real part and they get wrapped up in, in all of the trimmings. Well, I think in, in some sad ways, it's, it's as if the season that was about God's gift to us and therefore the inspiration in us to give has become the gimme season, a sadly exemplary of the gimme times in which we live. Uh, and, and I think that then, the true point of it is entirely lost, and one spends one's time focused 
on exactly the opposite of the truth of that Christmas reality, that Christmas message, which is also a challenge to us. The wonderful thing in, in what you just said in terms of, of God taking the form of, of this child is, is that a child is in some ways exactly the opposite of the all-powerful God. The child is dependent on others to be taken care of and to be cared for. But in that, the child has a tremendous power if you have goodwill. If you have goodwill toward that child, its very helplessness commands your duty and you are going to care for it. You make a choice, therefore, that, that is inspired by its helplessness. And, and so God took a form that would leave the whole burden of our relationship with him on our choice. He respected us that much that he allowed us to make the choice rather than confronting us with the awesome and overwhelming truth of his power, which would, of course, have left us with no choice at all. And, and it's the beauty of that soft touch. God has a, this remarkably gentle touch for, for, for an all-powerful being. He sure manages to do things in a way that has such gentleness. And it's that gentleness that I think we feel at Christmas time, the gentleness of true power, which in our times, a lot of people would do well to remember. Things uh, somehow get a little better at this time of the year. I've observed it. I've tried to step back and say, well, now, is this just because you're a Christian and you believe this? Really, objectively speaking, many good things happen at this time of the year that otherwise don't happen. And I think that it is a manifestation of uh, God's goodness that, in, in fact, uh, uh, touches people at this particular time. No, I think that's very true. I, I'm going to try, if I ha have the time here, I want to read a, 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 po a poem to you and to the folks out there, which I think uh, brings us to the cross-section between this wonderful Christmas season uh, and the love we all feel for our nation. And I was particularly touched by it when I saw it and wanted to share it with you. It's called A Soldier's Christmas. And it says, it's a sort of takeoff on Twas the Night Before Christmas. Twas the night before Christmas, he lived all alone in a one-bedroom house made of plaster and stone. I had come down the chimney with presents to give and to see just who lived in this home. I looked all about, a strange sight I did see, no tinsel, no presents, not even a tree. No stocking by mantle, just boots filled with sand. On the wall hung pictures of far distant lands with medals and badges, awards of all kinds. A sober thought came through my mind. For this house was different. It was dark and dreary. I found the home of a soldier, once I could see clearly. The soldier lay sleeping, silent, alone, curled up on the floor in this one-bedroom home. The face was so gentle, the room in such disorder, not how I pictured a United States soldier. Was this the hero of whom i just read, curled up on a poncho, the floor for a bed? I realized the families that saw this night owed their lives to these soldiers who were willing to fight. Soon round the world, the children would play and grown-ups would celebrate a bright Christmas day. They all enjoyed freedom each month of the year because of the soldiers, like the one lying here. I couldn't help wondering many, how many lay alone on a cold Christmas Eve in a land far from home. The very thought brought a tear to my eye. I dropped to my knees and started to cry. The soldier awakened and I heard a rough voice, Santa, don't cry. This life is my choice. I fight for freedom. I don't ask for more. My life is my God, my country, my core. The soldier rolled over and drifted to sleep. I couldn't control it. I continued to weep. I kept watch for hours, so silent and still, and we both shivered from the cold's night chill. I didn't want to leave on that cold, dark night, this guardian of honor so willing to fight. Then the soldier rolled over with a voice soft and pure, whispered, Carry on, Santa. It's Christmas Day. All is secure. One look at my watch, and I knew he was right. Merry Christmas, my friend, and to all a good night. Hmm. Very touching. It is very touching. I thought it was particularly true, too, because I don't know how many Christmases we've had recently where we've had to think of our soldiers uh, who have been sent out as our folks in the uh, Persian Gulf were just recently to do this and that. Well, they're spending the another the Christmas, another Christmas uh, because even though the, uh, the particular bombing episode has ended, uh, they are remaining there, and God knows for how long. And I think it's particularly true because that, to me, exemplifies one of the purest gifts that one can give in terms of the service that you give to country. I know folks talk about all kinds of things, but at the end of the day, when you give your life for your country, there has to be a reward that goes beyond any material thing because you won't be around to enjoy the material things. And so that risk, it seems to me, is one of those things that elevates us 
to the level of Christmas, because after all, who was Christ? One who, in spite of the fact that he could have, with a word of his power, avoided it, he was willing to take on our life and to give his life. Precisely. For, for, for the love of us and for our salvation. It, it's, it's a true tris Christmas message, I think, that, that comes through in a context that also reminds us of, of uh, the fact that God and country often go together if you want to hold on to the latter. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> we'll be back after this with more of my special friend and guest, Paul Weirich, here on the Christmas edition of America's Wake Up Call.